It's a decades old horror story that continues to haunt our community. Anthony and Nathaniel Cook are serial killers who lived in our midst, targeting young couples and terrorizing Toledo. And both have been locked up for years, but Anthony comes up for parole in just a matter of days. And some of the victims' families contacted us and asked us how this could happen. 13 ABC's Lisa Guyton spent weeks talking to some of the key players in this case, and she joins us now with the story. Lisa. The year was 1981, and the Cook brothers were in the middle of their cold-blooded killing spree. By that fall, Anthony was behind bars in connection with one murder. But it would be nearly two decades before he and his brother admitted to other killings. The case changed countless lives, and those left behind are still fighting for the loved ones they lost. It never ends. It never ends. Things like this parole hearing, you know, brings it all back to the surface. They took my sister. But that's, they're not getting any part of me. You don't get over it, no matter what. It's one of the darkest chapters in Toledo history. The story of sibling serial killers Anthony and Nathaniel Cook haunts everyone involved. It's almost like we have a scab here that we have now picked at again. And once again now we're talking about the Cook brothers and those people that lived that nightmare are once again going to be faced with reliving some of those anxious moments. Muriel Bolanek's daughter Stacy was killed by Anthony in 1981. It's a horrible feeling when your kids die. The Cook brothers' killing spree tore apart so many lives. It is very emotional, even after all these years. It's painful. Cindy Whitaker is Stacy's older sister. She was one of the last people to see Stacy alive. I could see her walking out my door that night. I can remember, I can remember every second of that day. Maggie and Steve Moulton lost a son and a brother. Scott Moulton was killed by Anthony in 1981. He missed out on a lot, a great deal. And we missed out on a lot, not having him. More than 30 years later, the excruciating pain simmers close to the surface. I buried myself in family. And that's how you got through? Yep. Some of the victims were killed with baseball bats and concrete blocks. Others were raped. So the fact that Anthony even has a chance for parole is hard for the families to cope with. They don't deserve to be out. If they can kill as many people and hurt so many people, they should never walk the street. That's where he should be. He should not be out on the street and, and have anybody else in danger. No, you have to let the system work. And, and do you well, believe it does? We're going to find out. Anthony Cook was convicted of two murders and confessed to seven others. His brother Nathaniel was convicted of one murder and confessed to two others. But it took a lot to get to that point. The twists and turns of this case span decades. The chill that went through our community, I think, when those two men were at large was very, very significant. Anthony was arrested in 1981 for the murder of Peter Sawicki. After that, the killing spree that gripped the city for years stopped. But many cases remained unsolved. Nearly 20 years passed before DNA and new forensic evidence allowed investigators to reopen those other cases. Lucas County Prosecutor Julia Bates first worked the case early in her career. Many people want to know why a serial killer like Anthony Cook is even up for parole. I, well, it's because it's the law. And people often ask, too, well, why didn't they get the death penalty? Well, we didn't have the death penalty in Ohio. Why didn't they get life without parole? We didn't have life without parole. Lucky, I guess, that we do now. And I'm not concerned because the evidence is so strong, the outrage so great, the evil so incredible that I don't think that there will be a chance that anything anything will come of it. But Bates says Nathaniel is another story. Do you think Nathaniel will walk the streets? Again? Yes, I do. And I say that with, with sadness. And I say that with, you know, trepidation. But that was the deal that we struck in order to not only convict Anthony, the, by far the more vicious of the two, but also to get the answers and the closure for all those cases that remained unsolved for those 20 years. And while the fact that Nathaniel will likely get out of prison angers the families, they focus on keeping Anthony behind bars. So I would hope that, that they can squash this and that they won't be out, but I, I wouldn't stake everything on it either. I believe in the Lord and I think he can carry you through a lot of things that happens. And 
I pray it last. I'm sure he'll come up for it again and again and again, and hopefully he gets rejected every time. Uh, that would be my wish. Now, according to the Ohio Department of Corrections, Anthony's hearing is set for February 23rd or 24th. If you'd like to send a letter or an email to the parole board, we have all the information posted for you at 13abc.com. On a side note, Bates says the cold case unit in her office came about because of the Cook brothers. The case demonstrated that investigators could use new technology to solve decades old cases. Anthony and Nathaniel Cook wrote one of the most terrifying chapters in Toledo history. The sibling serial killers have both been in prison for years, but they will both be up for parole. We got a tremendous reaction from you about this story, and so many of you, our viewers, want to know how this is possible. 13 ABC's Lisa Guyton on the story for weeks since tonight. She introduces you to more people who are connected by the tragedy of the Cook brothers. Lisa. Well, Lee Anthony is up for parole this month, Nathaniel in 2018. Tonight, we introduce you to a man who has devoted decades of his life to this case, as well as family and friends of Connie Sue Thompson, who have never publicly talked about their private pain inflicted by the Cook brothers. For like our first car. Some of the pictures of Connie Sue Thompson are beginning to fade, but the memory of her is still so vivid for family and friends. It took so much from the Thompson family that they all were so devastated and heartbroken over this because she was their shining star. She was the apple of their eye. Deanna Thompson never had a chance to meet her husband's sister, Connie Sue but she's on the front lines of the fight to keep the Cook brothers behind bars. You go on with your daily life, you know, and all of a sudden all these old horrible feelings come up that, you know, you have to deal with. Deanna's written a letter to the parole board for Anthony's hearing. And we understand the fact that there was no life without parole and no, no death penalty at the time, but uh, he definitely needs to stay right where he is. Connie Nadeau was named after her aunt, Connie Sue. I never got to meet her, but she is still has a big place in my heart. Juanita Roscoe is a childhood friend of Connie Sue's and has two daughters, including Connie, with Connie Sue's brother. A whole community, even now, the whole community has come together to um, really kind of be her voice. We know that the chances of Anthony getting out are slim, but we also know that the chances of Nathaniel getting out, who was part of Connie's murder, um, brutal murder, we do know that the chances of him getting out are more than great, and that's what we want to stop. Frank Stiles first worked the case with the Toledo Police Department and later the Cold Case Squad. He says he knew the series of murders in the early 1980s were connected. He didn't know who was behind the brutal killings until they arrested Anthony Cook in 1981 for the murder of Peter Sawicki. Finally got the leads, finally got the breaks, finally was able to put the cuffs on him. And that was the greatest day of my life. But it was nearly 20 years before DNA and new forensic evidence helped investigators connect the Cook brothers to other murders. Anthony confessed to nine, Nathaniel admitted to three. Stiles spent hours questioning Anthony, who he says seemed to enjoy talking about what he did. I mean, I've talked to a lot of bad guys in my life. I've been shot at, beat up, whatever, but nobody like this man. We got him, let's keep him, don't ever let him out. Let God deal with him. And while most believe the parole hearing for Anthony will amount to nothing, Nathaniel's plea deal means he will get out of prison after serving 20 years. Believe me, when he walks out that door, he will never be without friends on the police department. They will keep an eye on him. Frank Stiles has written a book about the Cooks called Evil Brothers. Get connected to 13abc.com to learn more about it. Now, there will be a vigil in honor of all of the Cook Brothers victims on February 21st at Jesu Catholic Church. The Mass is set for four and everyone is welcome. Anthony's hearing is scheduled for February 23rd or 24th. If you'd like to write a letter or send an email to the parole board, we have all that information posted at 13abc.com. Reporting live, Lisa Guyton, 13ABC, Action News.